Most urban growth is taking place in countries with emerging economies and in an informal and unmanaged way. Increasing numbers of internally displaced people and refugees are also settling in cities. Rapid urban development creates socioeconomic vulnerabilities and puts substantial pressure on cities. Cities find themselves unable to provide basic services and manage risks from acute shocks or chronic stresses. The World Bank Group report, Investing in Urban Resilience, defines urban resilience as the ability of a system, entity, community, or person to adapt to a variety of changing conditions and to withstand shocks while still maintaining its essential functions. Urban resilience tries to address the need for cities or of cities to withstand shocks and stress. If a city invests in urban systems, in water, in power systems, in transport, and that infrastructure investment is erased by a catastrophe, man-made or natural, that is a great loss. Urban resilience is a part of the resilience building aim of the World Bank Group's Forward Look, a vision for the World Bank Group in 2030, progress and challenges. The World Bank Group has innovated with different approaches to building resilience in cities with varying needs and capacities. There are, however, challenges in understanding and assessing how such innovations are contributing over time to resilience building. The World Bank Group's approach to urban resilience needs to address chronic stresses in addition to acute shocks. Chronic stresses that occur at the urban system level include water scarcity and drought, pandemics, high levels of crime and violence, and pollution, among others. The first thing that has to be done is building awareness, both by the private and the public, by all the institutions concerned, an awareness of what it takes and the importance of re resilience. The next step is coping. Basically understanding that when there are stresses, it is necessary to simply get by. And in the context of a city, that is a complex endeavor. We move on to more traditional thinking in urban development when we talk about the next step, which is adaptation. And that's actually taking a step further and understanding that you can actually take measures to adapt to the new threats and the chronic stress. The ultimate objective, which takes a long time and effort, is to have a transformative impact where the city is so evolved in its response to shocks and stresses that it is so robust that it can continue without any harm in the future. And there are very few cities that have reached that level of resilience. Approaches need to be people-centric and offer nature-based solutions. For example, for the Barrio Ciudad project in Honduras, the World Bank used the principles of crime prevention through environmental design. Through a participatory approach, it helped communities living in isolated, informal areas without public services and overwhelmed by crime and violence to identify and make changes to their physical environment. Going forward, the urban resilience challenge will be immense. We have basically two very big challenges. Simply put, we have to protect what has already been built in cities, and we have to ensure that what will be built in the future will be built in a way that will withstand shocks and stress.